want to share it too. So. Yeah. No, that's what we got yeah, time yeah, for. Yeah. <laughs> Was it on your Facebook? Or? Yeah. And we are live. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> oh yeah, we are live, aren't we? <laughs> oh man. Uh, refresh. Um, hey, pop buddy. out. Hey, buddy. And now this will be over here. I'm gonna turn my sound down, huh? I don't wanna hear myself. I'm gonna get that weird feedback. It's a loop. Come the time loop. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Yo, Pimpin. Justin. Hello, Justin. How are you doing? What's up, Justin? Oh, Pimpin. Is... Yeah, blow it up. I'm trying to. There we go. <laughs> trying to. Just it's taking me a second to blow it up. Alright, guys, we got a lot to talk about today. Welcome to the podcast that we have no idea what we're gonna call it yet. Hello, Justin. Hello, Oliver. Brandon Paul, how's it going? How's it going? Why did it move again? There we go. There Just we trying go. to share. Sorry, guys. Pimpin', I wasn't, wasn't ignoring you. What's pimpin up, everybody? Pimpin' Sin's been pimpin'. Sorry, these guys are new to this. This is... <laughs> You're killing me. Um... <laughs> Pardon the rookiness. A lot of rookiness. These guys have no idea what they're doing. Um, these are the guys from Ethereal. I'm gonna let them Ethereal. go ahead and inter- oh, introduce see. themselves. On camera there. Um, yeah. We all got we got a couple of hats, you know. Everything's going. <laughs> Swag so, looking good. Without further ado, Jay. I appreciate you guys, Justin, Oliver, Brandon. Appreciate everybody checking in. Uh, I just got the stream shared myself. Hopefully, we'll get a couple more on there. It looks like we're up to six now. That's awesome. I appreciate everybody popping on. Remember, look at the camera. Uh, we just wanted to get in and introduce ourselves. We're not really positive this is going to turn into... Oh, the mic's in front of my face. I appreciate you guys. Let me turn that just a little bit. There we go. Block Beautiful. Justin, looking out for us. Appreciate you, brother. Uh, we're we're going to see if this turns into something, man. We've got a lot of opinions. Uh, we're some different guys from a couple different backgrounds. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff going on. And we figure there's a lot of context missing. So you kind of see in the description what we're talking about as far as the uh, ellipses to missing context. It's possibly what we're thinking about. So we'll see what happens there. But uh, as far as all this fresh gear you guys see, uh, again, my name is Jay Beharry. I am the owner and head instructor of Ethereal. Uh, We are a martial arts and firearms training, safety, first aid, BLS, CPR, Academy uh, opening up in the Newport Ritchie area. We've got some online videos right now. It just demonstrates a little glimpse into what we do as far as some of our close quarters defense training, but we primarily specialize in concealed pistol training, uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, mixed martial arts, and we also offer uh, American Heart Association certified basic life-saving and CPR classes as well as yoga. And we're going to be starting up Aerial Silks as soon as our new uh, facilities built out. And uh, next to me, we've got our uh, chief firearms instructor, uh, Coach Chris. I'll let him introduce himself briefly. Yeah, so my name is Chris. Uh, I'm going to be handling the firearms instruction uh, for Ethereal. This is kind of uh, an idea that me and Jay came up with. You know, he always wanted to have uh, a dojo. He just got his black belt. Congratulations. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and, uh, you know, kind of those, both of those interests coincide with one another uh, in the self defense self-defense realm so uh, the idea was to kind of bring that uh, to the community because nobody else is doing that stuff right now uh, where you know you can go in a one-stop shop have everything all together so uh, like you said we're gonna be doing firearms instruction Brazilian jiu-jitsu combatives uh, take the stuff that's kind of uh, theory right now and make it a little bit more kinetic so absolutely and and he kind of hit on a key point there as well like the uh, the main structure of what we're all about when it comes to the academy that we're that we're putting forward is is the growth and development of the individual to to grow and develop our our community to hopefully grow and develop the, the external community and by that i mean literally taking people that come into our doors and trying to make them better people when they leave uh including you know bls and cpr certifications in all of our levels of membership uh, just as a part of, of being a member of our academy, just so we have more better trained people out there uh, to, to kind of better serve in our community. So uh, if you ever talk to anybody that knows any BLS or CPR has ever gone through any of the AHA classes, the t- statistics are alarming. 
Um, but most of the time, you'll see a, uh, people don't often intervene if they're not trained. So you got to really keep in mind that <laughs> there's a camera in front of you. <laughs> and and the, uh, the importance of, of knowing what you're doing so that you can intervene in these critical times. Um, uh, the I know for Pasco County, the average statistic right now, I think, is a seven-minute response time between a 911 call and the actual arrival of a first responder. So if you're choking, if you're asphyxi asphyxiated, and you're losing uh, oxygen to your brain, think about how long seven minutes can actually it's be if nobody's seven minutes is very long. critically intervening while you're not breathing. The possibility of you surviving drops dramatically as each minute passes. So by the time seven minutes rolls around, you're around a 30% survival rate. What do you think your quality of life is going to look like when you've uh, been out of oxygen to your brain for seven I, minutes? I'm thinking you're going to be in a bed. <laughs> so it's probably not going to look too hot, right? So uh, that's kind of the whole idea. The more people we put out there that know what they're doing, know basic life-saving, that's what BLS stands for, and, and CPR, uh, are the more well-informed, well-prepared people are out there to hopefully respond when your loved one or my loved one or your loved one is in a, a situation where they might need uh, somebody to be All their loved for. ones. All their loved ones. All the loved Matthew, ones. Matthew, Justin, we Lori Marie, thank in. you for the 99 stars. Uh, Leah McCaffrey, uh, McCaffrey, thank you for coming and hanging, at, uh, hanging out. Uh, swinging six and buzzing the greens. Thank you for liking the stream. Toto Jokey, Andy Brooks, Justin Willenberg. Good Brandon question Paul, from Matthew there. Uh, he's asking if we're talking response times in a populated area like Tampa. We are actually, uh, the statistics I gave you are from the instructor that my chief instructor is actually not with us this evening. Hopefully he'll join us on a future, uh, a future podcast. Uh, his instructor gave him. So we're talking about a fairly well populated part of Pasco County, uh, the Newport Ritchie, Hudson, Port Ritchie, Trinity area. Yeah, so the response times are going to be pretty good for that kind of stuff but you know seven minutes is still seven minutes I, I depending on how busy it is what time of day it is time of night you know you could see extended uh response time so having the ability to be your own first responder is critical you know uh especially with the bls stuff like he was talking about and some of the stuff that we're going to be going over too in the classroom when we open up hopefully is just some rudimentary trauma medicine um, to prevent exsanguination, you know, bleeding out, right? So that's stuff that you can intervene uh, very quickly just by yourself using something. Uh, I've got one here in my pocket. A tourniquet. FYI, this is not for the camera. He yeah. carries this <laughs> everywhere. He has it on him 24-7. Like, it's a joke, but it's not a joke. It's part of the preparation we're talking about. One of the times we were actually training, and I didn't mean to interrupt you, no, I'll right. let you hop back in, but one of the days we were actually getting some training in, uh, doing some combatives and stuff, Chris on his way home witnessed an accident. He didn't have to go to his firearm, but he was lucky he had his first aid kit on him because he was able to actually help somebody that was in a car accident in front of him on the road. So it's super important, just as important as we talk about the, the pistol and the, the martial arts training and the defensive stuff and all that. Like, Using level head when you're entering a, a, a confrontational is, yeah. situation. Keeping Simple your things. head. Simple things. Being a person that's used to being calm under fire, being a prepared person, these are the types of things that we're talking about. Go ahead. Yep. So couldn't agree more. I mean, you're you're far more likely to use the metal, medical equipment than anything else realistically because, I mean, every one of us can say, yeah, I've been driving down the road and saw a car accident. I mean, that happens all the time. The severity of it is what varies, right? But, you know, how many of us can say, yeah, I had to draw a gun on a guy, right? That That's not really all that common. So, but this medical stuff, man, it, just having the knowledge really helps with that confidence level. So even if you haven't experienced a, a traumatic incident, you can walk into it knowing, okay, what do I have and what do I know how to use? And that just gives you so much more confidence uh, being able to walk through life. And, you know, I've heard of people uh, cutting an artery while they're mowing the lawn or something. You know, and it happens. Right? Run over a rock, right? Yeah, Absolutely. Just, just stupid <laughs> stuff around way. the house, For sure. you know, yeah. where, where you wouldn't think of it. And, man, if you get an artery, we're not even talking about minutes anymore, depending on, you know, how bad the injury is. Well, you know, so. I, I recently um, uh, had a, a crazy accident happen, and uh, 
uh, an elderly uh, family member fell into a fire pit. Mm. Uh, oh, and uh, the only person on scene was that, that had any real, or no, actually, I mean, two people on scene had, had real medical training. One was a nurse, uh, his daughter, and then my wife, who's a, a vet tech. And uh, uh, she, my wife was the first one on scene and, and absolutely saved his life. Uh, pulling Knowing your out, wife, I had no doubt pull, about Pulling that. him out. And uh, <laughs> I was the second on scene uh, and uh, helped, uh, you know, put him out. And uh, uh, with, with no no training or anything, just just you see, you you know, there's two types of people. Absolutely. There, there's the type of person that runs to a situation and there's the type of person that runs from it. That yeah. the, the that's it, and you don't know what kind of person you are Deliberate. until you're put into that situation. Yeah. Uh, there's no either, you 100%. can talk about it all you want. You can uh, you can throw this or that uh, in many different directions, but uh, until you're in a life saving situation uh, where tragedy is involved, uh, you never know how you're going to react. And, yeah. and just having simple knowledge is even from health class back in school. Uh, you know, when you were in high school and whatnot, is is enough to help uh, uh, save lives. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, uh, there's and, there's and, a third person, and that's the person that freezes and gets in the fucking way. <laughs> <laughs> so don't forget about that. Uh, the speed bump. Hey, how you doing, golfer guy? How's it going, buddy? Absolutely. And that's a great segue. Actually, a lot of the focus of the mental side of what we present in our training, because uh, on top of the physical defensive stuff, we also offer meditation training. We also offer homework help for the teens and the younger kids. Uh, the mental aspect of the development of what we're trying to do and propagating better people and better trained members of society hits just on what you're talking about. When you get used to being in the fire, you get more comfortable making better decisions. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You don't become the speed bump. You don't become the person that goes, oh, crap, and turns and runs in the other direction. You don't right? pick up your cell phone. You don't pick up your phone and start recording <laughs> uh, and post it to get clicks, right? Absolutely. That's the worst. That I might mean, be person number four, right? Yeah, That's worse right. than Somebody the person that Somebody has to pick up the phone to, to call Worse than the, the person hell, that but, freezes, yeah. the one that picks up the camera and records it. But absolutely, the more that we train in these situations, and we're talking spontaneous uh, tourniquet situations, when we're talking about our combatives program, when we do our uh, knife defensive training and our firearm, firearm defensive training, there's times in practice where myself or, or Coach Chris will just yell out, uh, we got a bleed or knife wound, knife wound, and throw a tourniquet out. And we've got to stop in the middle of practice and address that in a real time, air quotes, type of situation so that we can be used to it. You know what I mean? What if there's an accidental stabbing? What if somebody accidentally gets lacerated? we got to switch gears in an oh crap emergency situation, be able to apply it with quality and keep our heads. I mean, uh, it, it sounds scary to like, you know, throw yourself into a situation, you know, like a, a world where you're always thinking about the worst thing that's going to happen <laughs> in, a, in any situation. You know, you're you're preparing yourself for the worst and hoping for the best. But, you know, I, I think we're, we've are we kind of moved into a, a world, unfortunately, that that, that, that we're, we're, we're towing dangerously close with the line of, of self-preservation versus uh, care for another. There's, a, there's an old uh, saying, and I'm, I might misquote it, but you guys may know it better than me, but it's uh, better to be a, uh, a warrior on a farm than a farmer in a war. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah. E e e unfortunately, like you said, the times we live in may dictate uh, the priority uh, of knowledge, but it doesn't mean it has to all be in a negative context. Like I said, with the mental aspect of what we're trying to accomplish, it's about achieving more as a person to be able to contribute more to your community, not so much to be in fear and, and live in a defensive way to where I'm looking over my shoulder, but building a network of well-trained people with integrity and virtue, you know what I mean? Being able to look across the street and know, hey, I've seen that guy, I've seen that guy, I've seen that guy, or across the mat and say, I've seen that guy, I've seen that gal, yeah, I've seen that kid, mm -hmm. I've seen whomever, and I've, you know, I've, I've sweat with them on the mats. I know what they're about. I know that they've got that CPR training because they came into classes one day. I know they've done combatives training, so they know how to, they know how to tie a tourniquet, you know what I mean? Uh, they know how to place a 911 call and have First responders come uh, with with gurneys and not guns drawn. Very important. That's also something uh, Coach Chris teaches in, in his awareness classes. Uh, things like that are super, super important. And the more that we control that stuff. <laughs> chat's, chat's getting chat's feisty. Lighting up. Chat's lighting up. What no, do we got? Chat's getting feisty. I mean, what do you, uh, Eagle Eye, what do you mean? We have a fully capable president to protect us. <laughs> Woo. All right. 
<laughs> Chat, you're you're getting feisty now. All right, all right, we, all right. We're talking on a local <laughs> level because, again, I, I'm not going to disagree with anything I'm seeing to this point, but um, on a local level, it's uh, it, it's it goes back to a challenge that I got from a really close friend of mine when starting our nonprofit group a couple years ago, which is actually how this whole thing got developed. I don't know if you guys remember last December. Uh, Girl Dad Gaming helped uh, my community outreach group, Triple Point, raise uh, four hundred fifty dollars. I think it was four hundred seventy, if I'm not mistaken, four hundred seventy dollars for a uh, local firefighters department uh, uh, toy drive for the kiddies. So that was really awesome. But, but um, yes, boys, I am I am concerned about where we are. Now, so. <laughs> but um, the the friend that helped us uh, or helped challenge me to start that group brought up the really interesting point of it's really easy to complain and, and to say things, but what are you actually doing about it, right? Just like I can I can type a comment, not, not a dig at anybody, I love you guys, keep <laughs> keep putting the comments in there for us, but uh, just like I can type a comment, what are you actually doing? And what we're doing, the steps we're creating, it, it, it's, it's making a program to take people that may be lethargic, maybe don't have something to be passionate about, give them a really cool way to get, first of all, in shape, to develop their mental prowess, to be better aware as a, as a person in a physical situation and more self-aware and be able to help people around them, you know what I mean, to develop that sense of community. So what we're trying to do about it is physically go out, grab a hold of people and do something about it. I'm gonna try and make you a better, well-trained person. By choking you out. By choking you out, teaching you how to keep your gun if you ever have to pull it, and when, this guy, when, you can pull that gun yeah. in a legal situation. Which, if you want to expand on that as well, Chris is currently in the in the process of being certified as a legal use of force expert for the, uh, well, for our company, but <clears throat> from the state yeah. of Florida. <laughs> so it, it's something uh, that I've been interested in a long time, uh, for a long time, looking into the legal aspect of carrying and potentially using a firearm in a justifiable use of force in, uh, situation. So. There's a lot of stuff that people really don't consider when that uh, when it comes to that. So yeah, it was wild. you know, reading and researching and learning about that stuff is really important because while you think you might be justified in pulling your gun or you know you've war gamed this fantasy in your head about how something is going to play out, realistically it could get you in a lot of legal trouble. So you may walk away from the situation being the victor. But then going to jail for the rest of your life, you know, and it's something you got to think about. Or losing your business, your yeah, home, everything. everything you've ever worked for, not yeah. seeing your children, just losing everything in legal fees. I mean, just what if you walk away and lose five years in legal fees? That would wreck yeah. most people, this. especially Hi. after coming out of what just happened the last year and a half. Right? Hi, Tim. How are you doing? I'm Girl Dad Gaming. Um, the video gaming, I obviously don't have a game tag, so we're... we're <laughs> Tim, Tim is a notorious troll. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and skid right on past Mr. Tim. But, but uh, definitely check out Ironside, Ironside's Barbershop. He can cut Jeez, some hair. Jeez, Mr. Tim. He can cut some hair. He's, he's, <laughs> he's not the nicest guy in the world, but he can he can throw a haircut Well, around. why don't you come and check out some video gaming during the day when I'm actually in playing? Yeah, or check out some of his other videos. He's got plenty of them. Go to his YouTube as well. Ah, uh, Yeah, you can check out some of my uh, big time, you know, <laughs> I have some. I actually got some pretty good clips today. Yeah, yeah. I got I got some pretty nasty clips the last couple of days. I feel I felt terrible for it, but you know sometimes you got to take the shot. You know they say you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take, whether it's in real life or or, or in a video game. 100. Like it doesn't yeah. matter. Like it, you know you never know. They might just be on the other side of that tree. You know, I, but then you're gonna Sick. get you know I, you're hacking if it's on a video game. Right. If it's in real life, they don't. Nobody can. Nobody can say nothing. But yeah, absolutely. <laughs> We're not. Not 360 no scoping in real life. <laughs> what do you mean? ADS, you can't, you can't ADS like this. You know? Oh, wow. Um, but it's, uh, I'm so, you guys I do want to do, are crazy. I do want to do, like. Tim, thank you for checking everything out. I do want to do, like, 15 minutes of um, hey, some some current events. Absolutely. Mm. So, like, I don't know, we've been, we kind of did a nice little, I think, introduction of, of who we all are. 100%. Um, and we'll, we'll, I'm sure there's a lot more layers to kind of unfold. Hopefully we do this a little bit more, and uh, you guys get to know us a little bit more as we as we keep going. But we'll keep a couple of our, our secrets in our pockets. What there's, do you some, think? there's some stuff going on in the world right now, right? I, 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 I mean, I, I don't, I'm not I'm a not, news I'm guy. I'm not sure. But, I'm um, not sure. I think something about maybe a Olympic 
soccer, Facebook. I, I know that we're digital we're, crypto something. We're being censored, wasn't it? You know, by Twitter. But there was uh, a yeah. volcano. No. No, no, there was a vo- there was there was there was uh, definitely something. No, the uh, the earthquake in, in Haiti. Right? Haiti. That was Chat. Has anybody terrible... been watching the news? I, does, does anybody uh, has there watch been any news? any headlines on Facebook? You guys have been seeing is, at nauseum. Is, is there anything that anybody wants to hear our opinions on, or you know, worry that we're going to all die at some point in time? But tell you what, in all seriousness, if um, before we get directly into anything and, and start to painting colors all over the room. I would really like to uh, sincerely say if there's any veterans watching or in the chat, if anybody would like to just reach out and share with us your thoughts, that would be, uh, I think, really cool before we kind of step in and, and give ours. But I would love to hear what uh, what any veterans in the, uh, in the girl dad community or the ethereal community or just that happens to catch the stream uh, has to think before we get into anything uh, overly light or overly heavy. <laughs> uh, I I can just tell you that I'm uh, I'm worried. Sure. I, I you know I I I never got the chance to. I, I got a plate and six screws in my left ankle. I always wish that I that I had been able to um, join the military and, and have that part of my life, but uh, you know shit happens. <laughs> <laughs> as as most people put it, but um, absolutely, it's a it's a scary place. Uh, I feel like I feel like we we as a as a civilization, as a as a, as a race, as a human people, as a as a everything, uh, repeat mistakes over and over again um, for no for no reason other than uh, greed and and power and um, and it just seems to be a, a it doesn't matter how far you go back in history, uh, we could go back. You know, into any war in history, it, it was about greed, power, and and control. So, you know, how has that changed in the in the modern world that we live in? Uh, would be the question that I pose to you guys. I think there are a lot of perspectives there that you have to consider, and I've actually the reason I wanted to start by asking that question uh, is because I think a lot of times the nuance gets lost in how the people that were actually there doing it feel versus the politics of it. Um, From the people that I've talked to that are friends, there's a lot of mixed emotions there. A lot. Um, There's never an easy answer with any of that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? No. So it's really hard to sit here and, and literally with arms on the chair, armchair quarterback it, but I can't imagine this was the most efficient thing we could have come up with. Uh, that's something I can probably pretty safely say, especially with buying three months of time uh, to come up with hopefully what you would think would be a, a, a better strategy or at least reevaluate the situation. Why else would you ask for an extension, right? Um, to still end up with a oh, sucks to suck kind of a deal. It feels a little disingenuous. I don't know enough about the nuts and bolts of the situation to sit here and say right, wrong, or indifferent. I know that, like I said, I've talked to people that have that I know that have served over the last 20 years that have differing opinions on it. And you're talking about people that were in the same sand. So it's really hard to say X, Y, or Z about it. Yeah, like figuring out how to do this, it seems like you've got you've to figure out the least worst way to do it. You know, it's the a, least worst. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> kind of that hurts. Like, that hurts to just. It sounds hear. like the last couple of elections, doesn't it? Yeah. It just it hurts to hear. The least God, worst. The least hear. worst. Least worst. I love that. It hurts it's like, to hear <laughs> so bad. Ripping a, ripping a bandaid off, almost. You know. Right. Um. I don't. You know. I'm not a fan of the incumbent, but man, we've been there for 20 years. What like. At this point, what that turd's do you want, been passed you know? around, man. It's easy to point the finger, but that turd's been passed around for a while. Yeah, yeah. I don't like that they the they're absconding with a bunch of our shit, though. <laughs> they have like uh, helicopters. <laughs> I mean, planes. is it is it fair to say absconding or we left it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay, so we left without on, it. On this note, on 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 that bombshell, <laughs> let me just say. 
the pictures that I see of them holding thermal scoped rifles absolutely fucking terrifies me. Sure. Absolutely. It, it terrifies me for anybody that that even with the worst shooter behind a weapon like that, like it's they're not shooting an AK anymore. They're not shooting like they can see in dark. Like, like we just I don't know. I don't know enough about anything. I, all I have is a, a a place like I have a set of cards from from Desert Storm. You know, you know, like uh, baseball cards because I was that That's kid. That's a thing. Yeah, that was a thing. Uh, <laughs> like trading cards? Yeah, they have they have they have they have Desert Storm trading cards. So I've always who's been on into the, the yeah, military. Who's on the card? Uh, it's like military. It, uh, it's like vehicles, actual... vehicles, uh, generals, <laughs> like all sorts of stuff. <laughs> Do you like play risk with them or something? No, like no, they're just they're just like baseball cards. You yeah. know? That's <laughs> Collectibles. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. They they can have whatever guns they want. As long as they're shooting them over walls like this, I don't really give a shit. <laughs> so Yeah, I mean, depending on how deep you want to start getting into stuff though, you, there's there's some really fun uh rabbit hole type things if you want to start researching where uh there's a significant difference in some of these uh insurgent forces in terms of even how they're carrying weapons, when you look at the videos of them training before and after our intervention, uh, we literally, and I'm gonna say this as a matter of opinion, not a matter of fact. Um, you're so you gotta you gotta you gotta loud it up. You're you're messing it up for the rest of us. <laughs> a matter of opinion, again, not a matter of fact. Uh, we basically trained and armed. <laughs> And angered Real for life 20 Tarkov, years, yeah. two generations uh, of people that are really upset with us and are really glad we're gone. So when that kind of thing happens... Two what's generations. The, two generations. What's, what's the first Way thing you think is going to happen? Way more. When, when, when power dissipates a vacuum, it creates a vacuum, right? We're so in trouble. When that kind of thing happens, all those people that were literally just sitting outside the gate... Strutting back and forth, working out, taking creatine, getting guns from us, watching YouTube videos, beating off, whatever they're doing, right? Staring. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna get too. I was gonna say something. Um, <laughs> I'm not gonna get too spicy. But literally, we should play. We literally, should play Tarkov and, and sitting talk outside about the gate, waiting for us to say, "All right, deuces." Left all our shit. And they come strolling in like you, 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 and you. Y'all all look fat, comfortable, and happy. I bet you were helping them, huh? First ones. I mean, it's it's it's. We've all seen the movie before. It's not hard to guess the next thing that happens. It's every Steven Seagal movie you've ever seen. <laughs> and we <It's> spend <laughs> a ton of money. We spend a ton of money Absolutely. on helping all of these people and fighting every their wars. People. Well. Uh, and we've done it. Wasn't we've it like done it trillion or something? Ever. Like Forever. It's, 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 it's been our policy for a very long time. It's 50 something billion a year and yeah. t times 20. When I, one and a half. When I, when I mentioned before that sometimes. I'm not and, good at math, but that sounds like a fuck ton. It's a fuck ton of money. <laughs> when, I, when, I said, when I said before that there is other sides to this when you talk, especially to people that have no that Nick, service neither members. Of them, neither of them play Escape from Tarkov, but I guarantee you both of them would absolutely love it. I've watched you play once. They've I haven't watched seen, me play, I haven't, play I haven't once, played but, myself. Uh, um, but when you talk to people that that serve that are on the other side of things, that yeah. to, to the statement that you just that you just made, I have a problem with being world police as well. But I can see the other side of the coin, and the other side of the coin from the people that support that type of policy is that these type of ideals, when left unchecked, will propagate, and eventually. They'll continue to spread until you have to deal with it. Once it's at your door, right? Yeah. So I get the interventionalist mentality to that point. But where's the line is the question. Well, there is none. And that, that that's the problem. You know? But remember, like, <laughs> we, we asked for this. I mean, rewind 20 years. People Man. were screaming for blood. And I, not that I can blame them. You know, I don't think that, that was the wrong answer at the time, but we did ask for this. We didn't ask for 20 years. But, but then, did we go in under the false fucking uh, under false pretenses into Iraq? Probably yes. I don't think that's any in dispute any longer. But the Taliban was uh, holding Bin Laden. Oh, it's always been a. It's yeah. always. Uh, they, but they're so, all working together, no matter how much they hate each other, because they hate us more. 
there are <laughs> there are lines of thought. I'm, I'm not gonna, gonna, I'm gonna I'm go not give gonna us gonna a refill. So finish that up. There are lines of thought that uh, that would point to the fact can that. Can that yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. We are far more responsible for the Taliban being a thing than most people realize. And yeah. the, the creation of the Taliban is a direct result yeah. of our intervention. Yeah. So to say that it just kind of came up and these things started happening, then we responded, it's a little bit of a chicken and the egg kind of thing. Because if yeah. we didn't shit the bed in the first place, I say we collectively, I didn't do it. I was hanging out in Tarpon Springs and or Newport Richie. I did pay for it. <laughs> so did you. Which is why I'll never pay taxes again. No, I'm kidding. Wink, wink. Um, Don't at me, IRS. <laughs> they're not watching us yet. Yet. <laughs> yes. yet. Uh, no, but seriously, it's, it's, it's an interesting thing to think about. Because, yes, you have to address it. But at a certain point, when does the diminishing return kick in when you created the problem that you're, stend- you're spending all these resources to solve? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, we, we armed uh, the Taliban and bin Laden initially, but it's because we're at, at the time, and even still now, we want to fight proxy wars instead of actually just going in and doing whatever it is we intend on doing. You know, so we created our own uh, Frankenstein's monster, so to speak. And, uh, yeah. I mean, Settle down, gonna... Eagle Eye. <laughs> Don't bring him in just yet. We got we to stay below the radar for the moment. Okay. <laughs> Uh, no, but you're you're absolutely right, dude. Like it, the the situation's so nuanced that it, it'd be easy to sit here and, and and say that I know what the right answer is, or any of us to say, well, you know, we could have done this. Or what I've heard even better is that's him. Is uh oh sorry, it's okay. Thank you, Thank you sir. Is the uh, the guy that was in before it wouldn't have happened? Well, let's be fair. The plan that's unfolding. It's from the other guy. True. Right? Yeah, right? Was it executed properly by the guy that's in there? Well, that's that's semantics. I mean, we could argue that all day. I don't know the details of it. But the, the plan to get out of there, I don't disagree with. At a certain no. point, when do you quit pissing into the fan? Right. <laughs> right. Um, but I think the thing that I've gotten from a couple of my friends that I've spoken to and the ones that are out there that are listening or hopefully will watch this, hopefully I get to talk to you too, because uh, I'm curious as to your opinions and if you, honestly, if you just want to, <clears throat> we definitely want let your feelings out. Opinions. Let me we, know. We like anything you guys want. Like Talk. this is Absolutely. this is not just a one-sided conversation. The point of this being live, just so everybody out there knows, and like you know, we can make this a little snippet. But snippet. The whole point of this is so that you guys can come in and have a conversation with it. other people from me. anywhere across the world or across the United States and, and find something maybe in commonality or learn something new or, or just ask a question. You have a, you have a, a firearm specialist, you, you have a, 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 you know, a martial arts specialist, and you got somebody that knows about technology and just you know, general hard work in life. So yeah. uh, We're all family guys. We're all slightly different walks of life, but we're all people that kind of have come together over a common bond of uh, just wanting to kind of get some truth out there. <laughs> we don't even necessarily have the plan correct. I'm sorry? I said the other guy did have the plan correct. Well, I didn't say... (laughs) I'm sorry, what? (laughs) That's... Again, it's semantics at this point, right? It is. Because we're here. We're we're, we're in this current situation. Kind of like what we were talking about. Sorry, I bumped the table there. It's... it's, Obviously, I'll add on to what I was saying. It's easy to point back in, you know, hindsight, right? 2020. And say, hey, this, that, this, that, your fault, your fault, your fault. Even though he said he wouldn't do that. Well... I mean, there was a lot of things that were said that were inaccurate. I believe, like, two days prior, there was literally a quote of, you're not going to see helicopters on the embassy airlifting people out of there. Come on, man. Something like that. And, uh, uh-oh. But yet, here we are airlifting people out of the embassy. And there's literally people getting airlifted. I mean, it's like Somalia all over again. So, I mean, did I? Shit. Well. But, hey, that was a great movie, by the way. I love I mean, Black Hawk Down. Like, great I'm movie. just saying, great movie. Yeah. I mean, we, we so I want to be able to talk about all sorts of different stuff on this podcast. You know, it's just Earthen. three guys yeah. hanging out, having a good time. By the way, have you seen the movie The Wall? The no. Wall? No, you've never seen the movie The Wall. I don't think so. I okay. think we should. I think we should would should look up uh, the movie The Wall. Which keyboard uh, are we on here? 
you're on this keyboard. We should should look up the uh, movie trailer for the wall and we'll, what's up, uh, chat? Let's we'll get, do some, can we get a little we'll bit more? We'll do some fun the, uh, stuff. These guys these guys have no idea what it is, channel. and I do. The it's wall. called The Wall, and like, it's on Amazon. Okay. But it should like just... Wall, wall, wall. The Wall, the movie, IMDb, okay, maybe there down there. All right. And then I have to go over here. Hold on a second, guys. I gotta get this Eagle, I, I don't know that on. I disagree with you, brother. I, I, I'm not even going to say... I got nothing wrong with your statement. I, It doesn't it doesn't get us anywhere, but you're you're 100% correct. And the laughy there, face... That laughy face works works for me because there's nothing else you can do with it right now. <laughs> uh, so, The Darkest Reign. There is no other guy, though. The longest a president can serve is eight years. That means at least three presidents have to be involved and s- supported in this. No, you're absolutely 100% right. There's there's blame to go across the board so far back that it's absolutely ridiculous. 100%. And the funny thing is, it's bipartisan blame. It's Republican, it's Democrat, it's a bunch of people that just want to be assholes at this point because they it's they the continue to make the same mistakes over and over again. Good old boy network. Yeah. It's the network of... There's certain keywords that I would love to mention, but I'm going to stay away from because it's going to put us into a weird category, and I'd love for people to watch this. But uh, <laughs> all right, all right. We're going to try and watch the trailer for The Wall. I don't know yeah. if anybody has seen The Wall. We're going to try and watch the trailer. So go ahead and start playing that, and we'll see if the... Let me just see if the audio... Did you work. miss me? I know I missed you. XOXO. We've got to wait for the ad. Boo. Boo ads. Boo. All right, here you go, guys. The Wall. By the way, I, I love this movie. I thought it was a great movie. See that? Yeah. Hit and run. Whoever he is, all right, yeah, funny. he's gone. Let's use a pro. We got no movement, not a sign of a shadow. Wait a We're going down there. Yes. And that's it. Why yes, it's John Cena. Him? <laughs> <laughs> if you saw him, it wasn't John Cena. It was John Cena. That's that wall. I got eyes on your ass, bitch pants. Especially the. Oh man, Cena. talk to me, talk no to me. No way, Tom. I prefer Marky. Sorry, it's not right. Scope, but that's just me. I mean. This is Afghanistan, though. How bad is it? Uh, as the bullet went through. Probably what they should have done with the first one. I'm kind of yeah. glad Will Smith didn't. I got a man down! <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, that's why he's the one that got shot. <laughs> We got a sniper. <laughs> High caliber weapon. Requesting instruction. Say that again. You got an accent. Not American. You a sniper? I just want to say Where are you that's miss? not cover. That's concealment. <laughs> <laughs> Big difference. Where you come from? Oh, no. <laughs> uh, you. I wish Darkest Rain. Talking. It's John Cena and Camo. Two <laughs> negatives cancel each other. <laughs> I have to get to know you. <laughs> so if he takes the ghillie suit no, off, no, he's no, invisible no. again. How can you touch Dumb. that rifle, you dead? This is true, but this is over. His family he's a double negative. He's a walking double negative. You can hide me. How is this, Ant-Man? Death. So obviously, be there's been a lot of like talk, I've, you know, with this development recently, and Scope. some of the renditions of my eye. soldiers and stuff, dude. You're fading. I'm fantastic. Trigger is it an extension is of my fist. Absolutely wild. They talk Kids about being in the, the trenches. The rifle is an extension of me. In these valleys, and, and I strike you down. I don't know where we are now. Yeah, within Afghanistan, like going from one mountain ridge down into a valley from the valley you were just in right next to it and the language is different in the same butt to butt like it's it's nuts dude and they've been like that for thousands of years and have no intention of changing <laughs> yeah no that movie is not far-fetched at all by the way it was actually it was actually a really good movie it was riveting it looks um, awesome it it it, and it it's it's really stupid. You, I mean, you can turn it off now. I think it, it restarted or something because he doesn't ever stand back up. I can tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> it's the sequel. Oh shit! I just <laughs> it's the sequel. Good news. Oh, the, anyway, the good news about what's happened so far is, is that the discussion about whether or not you actually need F-15s and fucking nukes to defeat the U.S. military is uh, no longer 
uh, a debate. <laughs> No. From the commander in chief himself. Yeah. You didn't see John Cena. Well, then you should have been here, Brandon. How was that my fault? But at the same time, <laughs> he can turn around and say, you don't need assault weapons. Come on. Come on, man. What do you yeah. What do you need an AR-15 with a 30-round clip oh for? God, a 30-round magazine. Your, your assault down. rifle 15s. What is, yeah. what you, what is you your, your assault, assault rifle, rifle 15s? Rifle. You mean your armored rifle? Jeez. But yeah, right. you need F-15s and nukes to beat us. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't sleep You're, on the insurgency. It's a thing. I know you saw Chappelle show, right? Oh, what yeah. I look like grinding my feet yeah. in somebody's couch. <laughs> So I was grinding my feet in this couch. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh yes. My God. All right. Brandon Paul, and I didn't see him either. Oh, the family got home perfect. Some strong jawed guy. Daddy? Daddy? Oh, Sierra Ray! Hi, honey. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Hello. Come say hi. We're hello. almost done. How's it going? We're both soaking wet. Yes. Oh, we're no. still it's coming. raining really good. Yeah. Right. We got the we're family. almost done. We're we're gonna be oh, done at eight fine. o'clock, and uh, we're gonna go get some dry clothes on. Yes. Yeah, get you some dry clothes. Sounds right. like a great Say idea. Hi. Say hi. Hi, hi. we're live. Sorry, Everybody's sorry. on behind you. Hi. Oh my gosh, the cutest. All right, here you go. Oof, the darkest rain. We like to think of the Middle East as being stubborn and not understanding, but it's much more complicated as that. Uh, can you imagine the federal government trying to say that all the Native American tribes need to be under the same nation? It's really no different over there. It's stripping them of their, their identity. No, I, we I, just slaughtered them all. I really can't. <laughs> and gave them, like, smallpox blankets. Like, I, I can't we didn't have to. We didn't have to round them up and, and change their culture. We just fucking murdered all of them. But I can't, like, there were so many, there were so many different... <laughs> Uh, oh, Indian I know, tribes, 100%. It's, it's the same thing. I don't think it's our job to assimilate them is the thing. Oh, it's definitely not. It's uh, definitely not. I, th I think having an avenue for for people that can transcend that system is, is an important thing. I don't think an open border is that avenue. Yeah. I don't think uh -huh. keeping people underneath the thumb of a dictator based on a fucking short straw of being born yeah. is a cool thing to do. But at the same time, I don't think we need to be over there playing politics for everybody. No, we don't. We don't need to be over there Again, playing politics for everybody. Again, there's a line. There is a line. There right? is a line. <laughs> yep. We can't let things go on unencroached, but come on, dude. Like, but uh, at the same time, I'm, I'm sure you, which hopefully, I'm sure we have the same agreement on this, is that uh, at some point in time, uh, a people has to, to fight for themselves. 100%. And, uh, you know, you give that people all it's the been, tools. It's been 20 years of that, and they're literally holding the tools. And you know what they did? They dropped them. There's a storm. There's a big storm, sweetheart. <laughs> what a joy. But we gave them the tools. The training was there. And you know what happened? They dropped them in big, really clean, well-stacked piles. Yes. Yeah. And said, please don't hurt me, and ran the other direction. Who says they want to fight? I... So why are we willing... Why is everything so neatly laid out? Do you out? know the numbers I heard? I want, I want to put these out there real quick. There was less than 3,000 troops left in Afghanistan. We just sent almost 7,500 back over to more efficiently execute our withdrawal. Uh. How does that make sense? But with beyond that, okay, why is it worth our blood, sweat, and tears when obviously things are a little wonky right now, right? Within our own boundaries, right? Why is it worth our blood, sweat, and tears to go fight a war by proxy for people that aren't interested in fighting it themselves? I, 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 well, that's what makes it an untenable situation, right? You go over there, and the idea is to attempt to defeat, you know, the terrorists that perpetrated this heinous act on the country. But you can't just go over there and do just that. Because if you remove that power structure, to Jay's point earlier, you create that power vacuum, and somebody... Uh, worse maybe takes the reins you know so then now you're committed now now you're into nation building instead of just war and that's a really complicated thing and I don't think anybody has ever demonstrated a way in which you can actually do it without simply destroying the culture that preceded you coming in so it, I, I think Brandon Brandon Paul here brings yeah, up a, a good point that uh, if you want to go ahead and read it 
Uh, so, Brandon, but you also have to think of these guys and women who fought for this country over there. Uh, their family members that lost loved ones, it can go either way in this debate. Yeah, I mean, like I said, 20 years ago, we were begging for blood. Um, and again, I don't think that was the wrong answer. That was, you know, 9-11 was terrible, and we had to do something about it. You know, but you're fighting, we're fighting an invisible enemy to the extent that this is just a small group of people that, uh, that created uh, just this mass destruction. And now we've got to go out in the mountains and find these people. It probably takes about 20 fucking years to find them. In terrain that they've existed in for thousands oh, yeah. of years. I mean, they you're know talking, more about that terrain. You're than talking you know, generations know. before we were even a country. Yeah. Why? Why, why, why? Well, and to, it, be, it, to be clear, I, real quick, I just want to say to Brandon, not a debate. I think we're all on the same page. We're just passionate, brother. Not a debate whatsoever. <laughs> Dude, the Empire couldn't even defeat the fucking Ewoks, okay? <laughs> so it's You got beat with rocks and it's sticks. It's never been done. <laughs> Teddy bears with rocks yeah. and sticks. I, I, I think, <laughs> you know, so, like, I'm, I'm the gaming entertainment guy. Like, I really, like, live in that world. And, no um, shit. The movie 12 Strong. By the way, if anybody didn't see the merch, yeah, check I, the yeah, shirt out. The, 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 I mean, it's pretty good. Um, it's a nice shirt. The, um, the movie 12 Strong, I think, really highlights a, a lot about all of the war of Af uh, of Afghanistan, of, you know, tribal militias going up against tanks and, and armor and, and things that, that other countries left behind, right, or, or are giving to them uh, for the, what they want, but there's only so many of the them that are willing to fight they, 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 not everybody's going to be willing to fight and uh, we're only going back to to that like underground level of, of engagement where you have Americans going in uh, you know in the dark uh, that, that are private citizens to go and fight uh, you know for the freedom of, of other other citizens of other countries that nobody knows about. There's no, there's no reporting on these guys. There's no, there's no nothing. But I guarantee you, 100, percent they're over there. I love that to the nth degree. I think that is 100 percent a human right, not just an American right. And I love the fact that we are willing to fight for that for other people to the extent that I think it's a great thing to do. So long as it's not just a, hey, everybody's welcome to come in and get all of our resources thing. Yeah. But most importantly, I think the key aspect of what you said, within us fighting for these people, most of the time, these people are fighting these wars themselves. They want for this. I'm not going to go kick your door down and force freedom down your throat, right? You have to want it, right? I want you to look at me with that yeah. hungry look yeah. on your face yeah. and say, give me that freedom, you do have big to guy. Want you do have to and want it. So, you know, that's the difference. Right now, we're not seeing that. That connection of, you know, you guys have been here. Your efforts are appreciated. Whether or not, you know, that I, I, I shouldn't even say that. That's probably a touchy subject in itself. But this thing's lasted 20 years, right? Yeah. You're talking, there's probably kids that were 5, 10 years old that are full-grown men right now mm -hmm. with a whole different level of resentment in their hearts. Fighting the... the for U.S. soldiers, right? No. Uh, and there might even be, conversely, Or some, love, but now they just... I was going to say... Now they're resenting because, you know, their dad just fell off a plane in 2000 there was probably a lot that had a lot of love for those soldiers, right? Yeah, a lot of these soldiers have really good them. stories about the connections they made. But like you just said, now, once everybody leaves and their dads are dropping okay. from planes, their moms, their uncles, their cousins, all this stuff's happening, Frozen starts playing. <laughs> <laughs> somehow it always comes back to them. No, and, and somehow it always comes back to kids. All right. But I'm worried about the kids over there. You should I'm, be. I'm really worried about. I'm worried about the women, and I'm worried about the kids. Twenty years of shit I'm, popping I'm, off, and then everybody just goes, "What? I'm, Good luck!" I'm, I and walks out. I am so concerned. And Your dad and, and just got nothing. butted by a rifle butt. One of our rifles, by the way, just right to the dome. Just there's, took it right in the face. There's nothing we can do. I don't know. Do. I saw all their dads at the airport trying to get on a plane. plane? Yeah. yeah, falling. A few of them fell off. Um, it's a dangler. <laughs> we, got, we, got a dangler. we got a dangler. Uh, no, it's ooh. it's horrifying. It's, All right, it's a so scary thing. Where the darkest at? rain. The U.S. is so good at military efforts that when we launch a campaign, it's usually done without the thought of what if we don't or can't win. 
We just say we're the best. So here's our goal and here's how we'll attain it. There's no here is what happens if it doesn't work out like we expected. I, uh, that's yeah. never been a thing with foreign policy. <laughs> no. I don't know that that's ever fairly been a thing, with, with no, at kind of, least with American foreign policy. When you talk about Sun Tzu's art of war, it's a very different thing. But with American foreign policy, I don't think that's ever been a thing. Like, hey, if they don't crap themselves or give us what we want, we what out, do we do next? We outspend everybody in our military budget. Yeah. So it's really this kind of hold my beer strategy for <laughs> everything. <laughs> I got more bullets. I've seen. I, 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 thankfully, they'll eventually run right. out of bullets even though they have all of our guns. But uh, it, it, it is. It is. We, we, do things right that, we do things that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what. It doesn't matter what we think. or uh, The fact that... that we can sit that anybody could sit there and say, "Oh well, we we plan for every contingency." Never happened. That is just the most reckless statement that you could possibly have. It's 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 bad for the people. Fifteen thousand people, fifteen thousand Americans, and that's just uh, that's a, a number that they pick out of it. What you're going to tell me that there's a, a a perfectly round number of people that are stuck in Afghanistan? They they have they have census. 15,000 Americans that, that are in Afghanistan right now. I mean, that's just... It, who knows what the actual number is? That's just the number that they're telling us. There's a lot to what's being reported and how it's being reported. Let me swing that back over so you can get oh. some love, too. Oh, no, that's, I, I, I was getting plenty of love. Okay. I talk loud. <laughs> that, you guys there need there is more love. so much to the stirring of emotion in how things are reported. People base their entire thought system off how things are reported. With this entirely, like I, we kind of talked about and touched on at the beginning of things, I think it's most important to consider your friends and family, people that you know in your real life that are that are active duty or uh, former active duty or whether they saw combat or not. Because if they're a veteran, they probably know somebody that lost their life uh, over the last 20 years. And, and it's something to really consider the, the, the human factor in all this. There's a lot to go back and forth on, and we all have probably fairly strong opinions <laughs> on on uh, the woulda, shoulda, couldas of it. Everybody but has a strong opinion. The most, the, the, the most clear thing that, that weighed the most on me, um, and I just I, I don't want to bring it down, but just to share it with you guys, was a friend of mine reaching out and, and showing me, I don't know if you saw the picture, but that image of the, the Taliban uh, forward soldiers, I don't know, I don't even like calling them soldiers, the insurgents, uh, sitting in uh, behind a desk in the office of the American Embassy. And what that represented to them, um, whether it was from their direct service or people that they know or, or family members that, that lost people uh, over the last 20 years. And, and that was that was the uh, the image that really kind of put it over the top for them. That, that really made it real for me. And like you said, I didn't serve. Um, I can appreciate the freedom that I'm given from people that uh, basically sacrifice a giant portion of their life, if not their entire life, to go do this uh, so we can sit here and, and talk on a microphone and, and armchair quarterback this situation. But it's the hardest part about it was trying to empathize with them feeling that feeling, seeing that picture. You know? So before we go uh, to the next thing, um, I just want to like get – kind of you guys in the habit of uh you know when i'm gonna start putting in the wrap-up call so we're about uh seven and a half minutes from an hour <clears throat> of live stream and uh i'd like to um get to these next two um comments absolutely please do. and then uh wrap it up and kind of go over what what we're gonna look at next week Cool. Absolutely. Um, you know, uh, and, and what we're going to bring to the table for 100%. the viewers for next week. Brandon uh, and Darkest Rain, you guys are the best. Appreciate you. Justin, everybody. But Brandon and Darkest Rain, you guys have been interacting like the whole time. I appreciate you. <laughs> and you need to learn how to talk a little bit little louder. louder. Well, you just, you just got to remember that you're projecting to a microphone that's about this far We'll away. get it dialed in, folks. We'll, we'll I promise you. We'll get it tight. We'll get it tight. We'll get it tight. 
multiple. Like I said, I'm I'm a laid back kind of chill <clears throat> dude, so I gotta I'll get it to you. But I'll I like this I like this you know vibe. With this was really fun. Going, so. I had yeah. a good time. Um, let's get talk, to you gotta talk a little bit more. Cut me off if you need to. <laughs> let's get to Brandon Paul and let's let. Uh, Send it. Right, let's we will never one. fight a war that we think we can't win, but we should have had a plan 100% before we left Afghanistan. It was and always will be a hostile area due to the terrorist organizations there, but when it comes to leaving your own citizens over there, it infuriates the hell out of me. Uh, those people are Americans. Why are we just leaving them over there and they may die? It's so dumb. Yeah, they might. They, they might. Uh, they might pay the price for what we've done. <clears throat> I don't know if anybody else saw the images, but it was pretty <clears throat> shocking. The first day that we started leaving, they went around with rollers and paint covering up images of women on the sides of buildings and advertisements. Mm. Uh, women immediately started covering up in burkas. Little girls are no longer allowed to go to school. Like, there's a lot, man. Like, you're, uh, Brandon, you Talk are, about human's rights. Dude, you are Like, not human wrong. rights. Like, there's so many layers to this. It, again, it's a nuanced thing, but hey, dude, there's so much going on. Like literally, as we were packing up airplanes, they're painting over the images of women on advertisements and walls and stuff. Like it's, yeah. it's nuts. You can't erase somebody's cultural uh, cultural identity with bombs. It's just not gonna work. Never gonna happen. You're gonna create more enemies. Yeah. Uh, I, before Darkest Rain leaves, I just want to say, have a good night, man. Have a great. Thank stream. you, Darkest. And uh, we appreciate you, brother. Let's uh, look look forward to seeing you here next week. All right. Let's. Uh... Wow. Yeah, Justin, you're, you're. I saw yours up there too. We didn't. We missed that one. But reckless endangerment is uh, unfortunately. It's kind of like, uh, you, you watch the Avengers movies, right? You saw, um, what was it, the uh, Captain America Civil War, when they had the, uh, the, the, they bring what's in the, what's absolutely the city? love you, brother. The Accords. Uh, <clears throat> the, uh, Which Accord? Uh, what, what Accord are we talking about right now? I'm talking <laughs> Avengers uh, Civil War. What's the, the name of the war. city? The what cities, Civil War The city that fell from the sky. I Somebody see that one. Uh, it doesn't matter. I don't know, but uh, uh, Brandon, well, they all welcome. had to sign this thing because the Avengers basically were causing a crap load. Sokovia. Accords? Sokovia Accords. Thank you, Darkest. Darkest Rain. Wow. Um, Sokovia Accords. Darkest, you're on it, dude. Um, <laughs> they were causing all this collateral damage. Like every time the air quotes saved everybody. People died, like a shitload of people died. Yeah. Like cities fell from the sky, airplanes exploded, aliens came out of different dimensions. People oh, died. Oh, wait, we were actually talking about. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I, I'm making a reference. <laughs> but that responsibility, going back to what Justin said, the reckless endangerment, like we're playing the good guy role, right? We're playing the Avengers. We're over there oh, fighting the sand people in the sand, but we're the, we're the Jedi. But fucking people are dying, dude. Yep. And kids, unfortunately, that might not have politically led beliefs as they're growing up in these situations. Well, guess what? If they watch dad, uncle, mom, grandma, everybody get taken out. Yeah. Better right. or different. Hi, sweetheart. Radicalizes up, them. All of a sudden, they feel a different way about stuff. So what are we looking forward to next week, guys? I think we are going to have a wide variety of crap to talk about because the world is completely but bonkers. on the note of what you're doing with your ethereal stuff like oh, so dude. so we can so you know I, I liked how we started with the, I love it I the would first, like, like that to, kind of stuff in the first half an hour yep. or so and then we went to more you know yeah, yeah, yeah. just so next week towards the I'm end. gonna get a little bit more in depth about myself and my background I would love it if Coach Chris would talk about his background a little bit more and what makes him qualified. Talk to Don't talk to me. I, I love, but you're cute and you've got the little sweetie over here. I know, but, um, you talk to them. but Coach Chris <laughs> over here um, maybe can talk a little bit more about what makes him qualified to be the uh, badass concealed carry firearms instructor. Excuse me, that he is. Um, and I'd like to expand a little bit on what knowledge I bring to the table. Talk about some of our programs, and we may, may. Have another one of our coaches with us next week. Oh, that'd be cool. Uh, Coach K. Yeah, Coach K might join us next week. So well, we'll I mean, we, get, we always have an extra seat at the table. Seats Sweet. always open. Yeah, there's plenty of stuff to talk about. <laughs> it's uh, No shortage. It's like the fall of Rome, but with Wi-Fi, all right? Right. I think we need to hear from the superstar. Say, say right, you got to say hi. What would you like to say, sweetheart? What's say, on your mind? 
Hi, everybody. No, you're a little shy. Sit down, sit down, sit down. <laughs> Can you at least wave? Can you wave to the camera? Oh, oh yeah! <laughs> That's a good wave. All right. Brandon, what do you got? Hold on, hold on. Let me, uh, let me get down here. I love hey. America. I love my brothers and sisters in blue. All right, I wish we'll I could come minute. sit with y'all. <laughs> Dude, it would be awesome to have you, man. Dude, I would absolutely, any day, Brandon, you know you're always welcome here. You're a family, you know, family friend as far as I'm concerned, yeah. and uh, we've been playing games for a while. Uh, as everybody knows, if anybody's been watching, uh, I play games. I, I shoot people and blow people up, generally speaking. <laughs> During the day in, in the uh, virtual realm, uh, I, I like to teabag, uh, you know, other players and um, absolutely, the absolutely ruin, hot, ruin hot. people's days by shooting them out of helicopters. <laughs> but um, we'll have, a, we'll have a, a couple of highlight reels coming up here real soon. Thank you. Um, but it was, a, it was a pleasure having everybody here. We've hit the hour mark on our live stream and... Uh, I can't wait till next week to have everybody here. Uh, they're gonna have, you know, some more stuff, not only about themselves, uh, but uh, but but some more things to, to talk about in general. And uh, <laughs> never teabagging and clapping nah, cheeks. No, we're gonna be clapping cheeks and teabagging, bitches. All day. No. <laughs> that would be the name of the bitch. Teabags and clapping cheeks. <laughs> So, anyway, thank you guys so much for hanging out, and uh, we will see you guys next week. Let me uh, go ahead, and we're going to end. Hey, throw us a like on Facebook, Instagram, ethereal.llc. Oh, wait, wait. Yeah, I don't have the, uh, so here, um, go ahead and uh, uh, write a comment, www, right, dot ethereal dot com. Do you have an ethereal website? No. no? Not yet. What's your it's Facebook? Facebook.com slash ethereal.llc. Okay, Facebook.com. No, you missed Whoops. all of Whoops. it. Whoops. Whoops. Facebook.com slash. Oh, no, I'm not putting the, the web address. Maybe yeah. Search for it. No, no, web address. No, just, just, just put the web just address. Just add it, bro. Just add it. So, Facebook.com forward slash. Ethereal. A E. No, you missed the E at the beginning. Gotta work for oh, the place. I know. Like, how can you not know how to spell this? I can't see coffee it. Mug, Holy bro. cow. What is it? What, it, what, what did you put in that mug. coffee mug? Oh, you came back with mugs. I don't know what's going on. All yeah. right, brother. We love you. Cheers. Cheers. Thank there we go. Guys. Everybody go check out Ethereal. Appreciate There's the link. Guys. That's these guys. We'll see you guys next week. We're going to end out with, uh, with a couple of... Um, we're, I mean, we're going to get out of here. We're going to leave you with some music. And oops, I don't think that was Brandon Justin. The music that I wanted. Darkest, love you. Thank you. That's the music I want to leave you guys with. Is it playing? Hold on, wait. Where's my Tony Macaroni? Watch them live. Appreciate you, bro. All right, there's the music we're gonna leave you guys with. We're gonna go ahead and uh, turn the, the microphones off. We'll see you guys next Wednesday, same time, same place. Same that time. Same time. Who you are, who you I are, can't, care can't less about a horoscope. Middle of July, in a hoodie, in the overcoat. No. Really want to study the player team. one. Be glad that we That's what I'm going for. In the back. Yeah, I can't, I can't see what I'm going for. Yeah, I can't see what I'm going for. Now you want to hear about the evils I decide. I can't remember what button I need to fucking hit.